Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, little baby. This is my little baby, Lily. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome to yoga. We can start out seated or on your back. I personally love when my teacher says start out on your back. I'm always like, yes, I can do that. So um, I have some props here, blocks, blanket, chair, strap. And I'm going to start seated just because I'm going to talk us through our first yama. Or no, sorry, it's the fourth one. We're on the fourth this Sunday. And so feel free to find any sort of way to ground down. Just allowing yourself to arrive in this present moment. You might begin to soften your gaze or close down your eyes. Bringing your awareness to your breath. And then take a moment to practice gratitude. Being able to carve out the special time and place for yourself. And for your practice. This week we're actually going to practice with the fourth jewel of the yamas, which is called brahmacharya and this is coming from the yamas and niyamas exploring yoga's ethical practices by deborah adele so let me turn to brahmacharya brahmacharya means non-excess I'll just read a short passage from the book as you start to settle in. Brahmacharya reminds us to enter each day and each action with a sense of holiness rather than indulgence. So that our days may be lived in the wonder of sacredness rather than the misery of excess. In yogic thought, there is a moment in time when we reach the perfect limit of what we are engaged in. We can find this point that sits perfectly on the line of just right. It is this moment of just enough that we need to practice and recognize. Past that point, we begin our descent into excess. This process is true of any activity we are engaged in. Why do we move past the place of enough into excess? Yogic thought tells us it's because our mind begins to connect certain emotional states with certain activities. When a certain emotional attachment is placed with a simple body need, we find ourselves in trouble. Without realizing it, we have an acquired an addiction-like need for the repetition of the feelings associated with that thing. As we begin to peel ourselves out of our web of excess, 
is important to check in with the body's needs and to get skilled at separating these bodily needs from the mind's stories. If this idea of brahmacharya, non-excess, speaks to you, feel free to use it today as an intention for your practice, thinking about how you might incorporate it in your practice. So wherever you're at, let's all meet up on our backs. And then you can see about bringing a prop with you. So maybe you have a strap that you'd like to use or a block. And then we'll come onto the back. This is a nice gentle back or sorry, neck massage that I like to do with the block. So you could tuck your chin towards your chest, lifting your head and you might slide the block underneath your head. And I like to bring the edge of the block right to the base of my skull. And then just allow your head to rest heavy on the block and start to maybe gently, almost like you're shaking the head no. Rock the head a little bit side to side. Maybe it feels good to just allow your head to glide along the edge of the block. So I have the edge of the block right at the base of the skull, what I've heard referred to as the occipital ridge of the skull, right where your skull meets your neck. And maybe you can take some gentle sighs out through the mouth letting go of any held tension in the body. And then take one more nice deep breath here. Remembering that everything is optional. You can always use your discernment. You're welcome to experiment and try. And just allow yourself to decide what is right for you. If you feel complete from this little bit of neck massage, you could have also done that, I guess, with your head on the ground, just shaking the head from side to side. We'll open the arms out wide now in the letter T. Walk the feet out as wide as the mat, and then just allow your knees to gently sway from side to side. We call these windshield wipers. You can go slowly, move at the pace of your own breath, and you don't have to take huge amounts of movement. Remember, we can practice non-excess brahmacharya, or you might start to allow this movement to get a little bit bigger, Just allowing the knees to maybe float down to the ground. See if you can stay present with the sensation and just noticing that that is itself a practice. Sometimes our mind is so curious and wants to wander towards events of the past or plans for the future. Can you bring it back into the heart space, into that intention? And just like working out at a gym, practicing repetitions, that is building your awareness. And that is just like working a muscle. Build the strength of that practice. And then you can start to bring your head into this movement, starting to turn your gaze in the opposite direction as your knees.
And when you're ready, we'll pause the movement, allowing the knees to hover over to the right, softening all of your effort. You could dial your left arm up so that it's reaching past your ear. And then just notice that length that you can create from your fingertips, past your wrist, along the underside of your arm, towards your armpit, on the side of your waist, towards your hip, down your thigh, towards your knee. And maybe peek up at your left hand, doing a nice little gentle stretch, or maybe a big stretch through your neck. And then we'll dial it back to center, lift the knees up towards the sky and try the other side. So soften the knees over towards your left side. You might dial the right arm up, maybe peeking up at the right fingertips. And notice the length that you can create down your fingertips towards the palm of your hand, wrist, along the edge of your arm towards your armpit, down the side of your waist towards your hip, all along the thigh towards your knee. And then we'll take one more nice deep breath here. Go ahead and float the knees up to center, bring the arms out into a letter T. And we'll roll onto one side and come up into a seat. Now I wanted to give you an option for a seat. We're gonna do some stretching for the um, arms and what's called cow face arms. So you can either sit on a pillow, that can help lift the hips. You can sit on a chair, or I wanted to show you how you might sit on two blocks. So I'm gonna, actually not face you so that you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my two blocks and stack them in between my heels and then come to sit. This is what we call hero's pose. And I'm also going to sit not facing you so I can show you what we're going to do with the arms, but any seated position will work. So you can sit on a chair, this, if this is uncomfortable for the knees, don't torture yourself. Only if it feels good. I kind of like it because it helps lengthen my spine. And I also like it because I feel like it's a nice stretch for my quads. But if you're not getting those benefits, no need to uh, torture yourself. Okay, so we'll take the strap now into your right hand and then you can dial the strap up towards the sky allow the strap to drape down your spine and then we'll reach the left arm out to the left flip the palm so it's facing back the thumb is facing down and then you can wrap that hand around behind you and grab hold of the strap and just find any amount of tension in between the hands. You can walk the hands closer together. Some people can clasp hands. I'm not quite there. So finding any amount of sensation, remembering we're practicing non-excess. So it doesn't have to be your most extreme. See about even softening your grip. Thinking about non-excess here, where you don't have to hold on so tightly. And then next, if you like a little stretch for the neck, you could peek your gaze over your left shoulder. Find some nice deep breaths, maybe leaning the back of your head against your arm or your hand. And then you could tuck your chin and sort of bow your gaze down towards your side body. And 
we call this go mukasana or cow face arms. When you're ready, you can release your hands from your strap, bring your hands to rest for a moment in your lap. Take a moment to soften your gaze, close down your eyes. And then we'll get ready for the other side. I'm going to bring the strap into my right hand now. Dial the strap up and overhead, bend the elbow. Allow the strap to drape down the spine. And then you can reach your right hand out. Flip the palm so it faces behind you. The thumb is facing down. Wrap your hand around to grab hold of the strap. And then walk your hands towards each other any amount. Allowing yourself to find softness, stillness. Noticing if you can soften your grip 10% more. And maybe you want to turn your gaze over your right shoulder. Bring a little twist or sensation through the neck. Perhaps you want to tuck your chin towards your chest, bowing your head towards your side body. Take one more nice deep breath on this side. And then we'll release the hands. For me, it's definitely time to come off of the knees. So you can come off of your blocks if you've been sitting on your knees. You might give your feet a little bit of a tap. And then you might bring your blocks out in front underneath your hands. And we can tuck the toes under again. This is totally optional. Sink your hips back on or in the direction of your heels to stretch through the undersides of your feet. And sometimes you have to reach down and kind of make sure your little baby toe is, is also tucked under, or I mean, uh, it's not really tucked under. Make, make sure you're stretching through the bottom sides of the feet, the undersides of the toes. And this is why you can also bring pressure forward onto the hands. When you're ready, we'll untuck the toes and once more give the tops of the feet a little tap, a little love. And then feel free to find a child's pose. So you can reach your arms out in front. Maybe you bring your big toes to touch. Open your knees out wide to the sides. Sink your hips back. Now, I wanted to show you another option that I love, which is um, I've heard referred to as quarter dog. So your hips might be reaching up towards the sky a little bit. That, that's called like puppy dog pose. And then what I'm going to do is bend my right forearm, bend my right elbow, I should say, bring my forearm down in front, reach the left hand out in front of me, and then allow the forehead to rest on your forearm. Take a nice deep breath in whatever position you found. And maybe you wanna take a few sighs out through the mouth, letting go of any tension or holding. When you're ready to switch sides, you can bring your left forearm underneath your forehead. Walk your right hand this time out in front like child's pose and allow your forehead to rest on your left forearm. Maybe taking a few sighs out through the mouth. <sighs> Letting go of any tension or holding. See how you can sink into the support of the earth. And 
allowing your heart to melt. It might even feel good, and I forgot to mention this on the other side, for you to rock your forehead a little bit along the length of your forearm. Just feeling the weight of your head, massaging your arm. And then when you're ready, we'll meet up in a tabletop position. From here, we're going to do some cat and cow. Now, remember, you can always do this from a seat as well. So you can inhale, drop the belly for cow pose. Exhale, round into the spine for your Halloween cat. And go ahead and take a few rounds of cat and cow, following the pace of your own breath. Imagining you're able to polish the vertebrae of your spine. At any time, if it would feel good, you can change up the movement, maybe taking some nice big circles with the belly button. Allowing yourself to pause in any places that need extra attention. Allowing yourself to breathe in and out long and deep through the nose. Seeing if you can listen for the sound of your ocean breath. This is Ujjayi breathing, the warrior's breath. Feel free to reverse the circles when you're ready. We'll take one more nice deep breath here. And then when you're ready, we can come back to a neutral position. So from here, let's go ahead and meet up in hands and knees, and we'll find a stretch for the calf. And now if you don't want to be on the wrists, you could also bring your wrists onto forearms or onto the ground. And then we'll extend the left leg back, tuck the toes under, press the heel towards the mat, finding some stretch through the back of your calf. Now you could stay here or to deepen the stretch, maybe build a little bit of heat and strength. You could tuck the right toes under and then lift the right knee to hover over the earth. Totally optional. We'll take one more nice deep breath, soften the right knee down, bring both knees back down to the earth, and then let's find a stretch through the back of the right calf now pressing that leg back, tucking the toes under, pressing the heel towards the mat. And then if you want to do that little bit of hover, you could lift the left knee to hover over the earth. Maybe just for one breath. When you're ready, we're going to make our way down onto our bellies. So you can lower down onto the belly Lengthen the legs back as you untuck the toes. Press the tops of the feet into the mat, and then we'll stack the elbows underneath the shoulders for a sphinx pose. And you can kind of grip the mat with your hands. Gently, energetically drag them back as you lift the heart forward. On the next exhale, you might find a little bit of turn for the head, peeking back behind the left shoulder. And 
Inhale to gaze forward. And then exhale, turn your gaze over your right shoulder. On the next inhale, you can bring your gaze back forward. Stack your palms or your fists and lower your head down to rest on the back of your hands or on your stack fists. Or if you want, you could also use a block or just bring your forehead or your temple to the ground. It's kind of, for me, a nice neck stretch to bring my temple to a block. So I just have a block out in front on the low setting and I'm bringing my right temple to rest on the block. And then we'll bring the hands now underneath the shoulders. Roll the shoulders up towards the ears. Glide them down the back. Bring the gaze to the front of your mat for baby cobra as you lift your chest, strengthening your back, lifting your heart forward. Take some nice soothing breaths here and then whenever you're ready to rest, you might, if, you, if you've been resting one temple, you can turn your gaze maybe to the right Rest your left temple. And we'll try that a few more times, following the pace of your own breath. So you can inhale, roll the shoulders up, glide them down the back, lift the heart into baby cobra. Exhale, turn your gaze in one direction or bring your forehead down to the mat if you it's too intense on the neck to turn from side to side. So once more, you can continue at your own pace, inhaling to lift for baby cobra, exhaling to gently lower. Go ahead and take one more nice deep breath like this. When you feel balanced from left to right, you can bring yourself back to that Makrasana crocodile pose, stacking the palms, lowering the forehead, and giving yourself a moment to rest. You might even bend the knees and allow the heels to gently sway from side to side. This might feel like a nice massage for the thighs, maybe the belly. Just notice where you feel sensation. Maybe that movement radiates up your spine. And then when you're ready, we'll soften the feet back down. You can plant the palms underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes under, press up to tabletop, and then we're going to make our way to standing. So if you want to come through a downward facing dog, maybe you bring your hands onto blocks and come into down dog, or you could step your right foot Actually, this is my left foot. My left foot towards my left wrist and then tuck my right toes under, lift the right knee, and then maybe you can hop that foot in and come into a forward fold, skipping down dog altogether. From your forward fold, feel free to walk your feet wide, giving yourself lots of room for your torso, for your belly, Maybe you wrap your hands around your opposite elbows. 
And just find a nice ragdoll sway here from side to side. Once more, being with those sensations, noticing where you feel this in your body. And then you can drop your hands towards the earth, bring them onto blocks or onto shins. We'll heel toe the feet a little bit closer and then press into your support to lift up halfway. Lengthening through the back of the neck, the spine, and then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, we call this Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold into Uttanasana. One more time, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And then find some strength in the legs, spring load the knees, and we'll sweep the arms out and wide to the sides, rise up to stand, coming in to mountain pose. And you can release your hands to your sides, take a moment to soften your gaze, drop your awareness into your heart center. Noticing your intention for your practice today. And then blink your eyes open. From the top of your mat, we'll keep the right foot forward. Step the left foot back so your feet are on train tracks. And you can find sort of like a wide, not really a wide, but just a, a the feet are parallel, let's say. And then you can bring your hands to your hips, or maybe you invite your hands to meet at your heart, or feel free to grow your arms tall towards the sky. From here, you can bend into the front knee, and we call this Warrior One, Virabhadrasana One. You might even heel toe your foot, creep your foot forward if you want to find a deeper lunge. Your back heel can be rooted on the ground. Soften your shoulders away from your ears. We're going to invite a little bit of movement and flow. You can always stay here or on the next exhale, float your hands down towards your hips and lean your torso forward. Inhale to rise back up to warrior one. And feel free to do this two more times, finding a little bit of fluid movement. The next time you rise up to warrior one, go ahead and swim your hands down to your hips. You could tug onto your, the back of your shirt. Or you might interlace your hands. Sure <laughs> you can interlace your hands at your low back. We'll inhale to lift the heart, and we're going to find humble warrior next. So leading with the heart, hinging from the hips, allow your front torso to rest on your front thigh. And you could also use your blocks here to rest your hands. If your hands are at your low back and it feels okay for your shoulders, you can stretch them back, allow them to fall overhead. But choosing what is right for you today. Finding humble warrior, allowing your head to hang heavy. And then when you're ready, we're all going to meet up with our hands on blocks or on the seat of a chair if you don't have blocks. And then you can pivot so that you're, you're now on the ball of the back toes. You're lifting the back heel. And you can walk your hands out in front, hop your back foot in to meet your front foot and find that forward fold once more. Maybe with a wider stance, Ragdolling here, interlacing your hands around your opposite elbows, 
I'm just swaying a bit side to side. You might shake your head no. Nod your head yes. Imagining any tension is just dripping down from your head to the ground. And then when you're ready, we'll kind of walk the feet a little bit towards each other so they're now underneath the hips. Press into your shins or into blocks or onto the seat of a chair. We'll inhale for halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale for halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. And one more time. Inhaling, lifting up halfway. Lengthening through the spine and exhale to forward fold. Then we'll inhale, circle, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, draw them to meet at the heart center. Now take a moment to rest the palms of your hands on your heart. Feel the rhythm of your heartbeat. like your own unique drum beat. And then when you're ready, we'll blink the eyes open. We're gonna get ready to do that same sequence on the other side. So this is warrior one to humble warrior. I'm just gonna straighten out my mat since it's all curvy. So I believe we were starting with right foot forward. So we'll bring left foot forward, right foot back this time. I like to bring the blocks out in front, or you could use a chair. And then we'll set up for our warrior one. So your back heel is down, back toes are maybe pointing towards the corner of your mat. And then you could bend into that front knee any amount. Find a strong, steady base of support, recruiting maybe even the lower abdominals. You can keep your hands resting at your hips, bring them to your heart center in, in a prayer position, or lift them up to the sky for what we call Virabhadrasana One, Warrior One. You could always stay right here, allowing the shoulders to melt away from the ears, or with the next exhale, allow the hands to float back as you hover your torso forward. Inhale to rise up through center. And just two more times, following the pace of your own breath. Finding that strong, steady base of support. This light, fluid movement of the torso and the arms. The next time you come back into your warrior one, you can float your hands back. You might interlace your hands the opposite direction as before, or rest your hands at your hips, or you could tug on to the back of your shirt would be another option. We'll inhale to lift the heart, exhale to for fold forward, Feel free to also drop your hands where that's where we'll end up meeting. Rest your torso on your front thigh, bowing your head, finding humble warrior. Allowing yourself this opportunity to have a strong base of support underneath you while softening your total torso, your head. And then if your hands are interlaced behind you, go ahead and float them down to blocks or a chair. We'll pivot so that you're on the ball of the back toes now, lifting the back heel. And then you can take your time, maybe walk your hands out in front, hop the front, the back foot up to meet the front foot. 
You can take a moment to just ragdoll here like we did before. Maybe stepping the feet a little bit out wide to the sides. And just hanging heavy, allowing your torso to sway side to side. Maybe shaking your head no or nodding your head yes. And then when you're ready, feel free to either come onto hands and knees or step your feet back into downward facing dog. From here, we're gonna try pigeon pose. So I'm gonna set you up for pigeon and then realize that you can always come into a figure four instead. Or if there are any, but my hope is that you're finding different shapes that you love and you'll build a whole category, uh, a catalog really, I should say. So from your downward dog or even from um, tabletop, you can bring the right, actually I'm starting on the left. Well, you can bring the left knee towards the wrist and then slide the right leg back maybe bringing a pillow or a blanket underneath that hip. And then if you had a big bolster or a pillow, you could also bring that out in front. From here, maybe you stay in an upright pigeon or you could start to bring yourself down onto your forearms. I have my forearms on blocks just to bring the earth up to me. If it feels accessible, you could stack your fists and bring your forehead to rest on your fists, maybe on the ground. This would have been a good opportunity, kind of, we had talked before class about the idea of a restorative pose. So restorative yoga is actually a whole entire style of yoga where we use a lot of props and the idea is to calm the nervous system. So let me show actually with the bolster. I'm going to bring the two blocks on the low setting. And I'll bring the big round bolster on top. And then I'll set up in that same position. Well, I'll actually wait. So I'm going to, I'm going to come into pigeon by bringing the left knee towards my wrist lengthening the right leg back, holding a blanket to go underneath the hip, and then to lower down, I'll bring that big bolster so I can rest my head on the bolster. Resting the arms, finding yourself like a, another way of calling this is a sleeping swan. Now, for if any reason this is uncomfortable, let me show a different option, which would be figure four on your back. So for figure four, you might slide to a wall space or a piece of furniture that you could rest your feet onto. And then for the left hip, you could extend the legs long. Take a moment to rotate the ankles. And then bring the left ankle onto the right thigh. And then glide the right leg in towards the body by bending the knee, bringing the heel maybe to the edge of the piece of furniture you're working with, or maybe even onto a wall space. And so you're getting a very similar stretch, hopefully, either way in the left hip. So take a moment wherever you're at to soften. Imagine for a moment that there's a fountain at your heart. It's a fountain of gratitude. Allow it to overflow from your heart. 
and extend down into your hip. You might just allow yourself to practice gratitude here for thinking of things that you're grateful for. And then allowing that fountain of gratitude to wash over your hip joint. And you see if there's anything stuck living there that you'd like to release. Now you're welcome to stay here longer, either in pigeon or figure four, but if you'd like to turn this into a twist, if you're in pigeon, you can slide onto your left hip and then rotate into a twist. If you're in figure four, you might allow the whole entire leg shape to fall over towards the ground. So your left foot might land on the ground. Maybe your right hand reaches over to grab hold of your left ankle. Extending your left arm out. You can always readjust this though. And just stack the knees. Coming into a twist on your back, we call this a supine twist. Or if you're in pigeon, you might be seated, staggering the knees, finding yourself in like a mermaid style twist. Allow your gaze to fall in the opposite direction as your knees. Allowing for that spiral of the spine to continue. Take another nice deep breath in your twist. And then if you're coming in for figure four on your back, I'll start there and then come on to pigeon so I can show that one. So extend your legs long onto the wall or onto a couch or chair and you can start to rotate your ankles. Really good for helping to keep the joints lubricated. And we'll try the other side, bringing the right ankle onto the left thigh, drawing the shape into the body. You can always stay here as long as you like. Sending those. Bits of gratitude down into your hip. And then eventually from here, you'll allow the shape to fall into a twist. But you have plenty of time. Enjoy your hip stretch. If you're wanting to come through pigeon, I'll set that up on this side. So either from down dog, it kind of can be nice um, to use the blocks and come into downward dog. I'm going to bring the folded blanket as a pillow for underneath my right hip this time. So from your downward dog or from a tabletop position, you can bring your right knee towards your right wrist and then slide a pillow or blanket underneath that right hip. And then you can stay upright. This can be a nice stretch for the front of the hip. But at any time, you can come into this like sleeping swan position by bringing yourself down onto a pillow. You can also stack your fists to make a nice pillow to rest your third eye.
Make any adjustments that you need to make this comfortable for you. That's why we have infinite variation, infinite options. You can allow yourself to get creative with any of those options, maybe even bringing blocks underneath the forehead. Feel free to stay in your pigeon shape or your figure four as long as it feels good to you, stretching through the hip, sending the hip gratitude. I'm going to try and describe better or show that kind of twist that I was describing from pigeon. So I'm going to remove the blanket from underneath my hip and then bring my legs in a staggered, well, we call this like a deer shape. I'll bring a block for my right hand and then sweep the left hand over to the right knee, turning the gaze behind the right shoulder. Kind of reminds me of like a mermaid sitting on a rock. On your next exhale, you might bow your head towards your heart, allowing your chin to trace above your chest. And then maybe you turn your gaze over your left shoulder. Growing your spine long with your inhale and exhaling to find a twist. When you're ready, we'll unwind from the twist. And you might bring your legs out in front and then just give them a little windshield wiper from side to side. I'm going to set you up for a restorative shape that you're welcome to use for the rest of class if you like. So this is a really uh, popular one that's called a like a butterfly, a reclined butterfly. So for this, what I'll do is I'll take my blocks, one on the low setting, one on the medium setting to basically make um, like a, a wedge. And then I'm going to use this big bolster for this, I'm gonna set the bolster on that wedge. And then you could either use a blanket for underneath the knees, or you could also use a strap. So I'll show you kind of both options. So you're gonna bring your low back right to the edge of that bolster and you're gonna be lying back, allowing your arms to rest. So think about if you need a pillow from underneath your head or sometimes an eye pillow can be nice. And then you could either have your legs straight out in front or you're gonna bring your legs, your, your feet to touch and your knees open to the side. If you have a second set of blocks, you could bring the blocks underneath the knees, or I'll show you how you can use your strap for this. So I'm gonna bring the strap and make it into a big loop. So I go over and under. Usually you have like maybe two D rings. And then you can make it into a giant loop that you're gonna bring over the top of the body. I have my strap now, let's see here, the tail of the strap here. I have, I have the strap right at the base of my spine, and then I'm gonna wrap it around my feet. So I can kind of like 
bring the strap around the top of the thighs. Then I could even use the blanket next. So I'll show you how you can use the blanket for support. I'm gonna bring the blanket and I'm gonna wrap it into a giant log shape. So I'm gonna roll it into a log. I'm gonna bring the top of the blanket on top of my feet and then wrap the edges around underneath my knees. And then allow yourself to lean back onto your support. Maybe you can see why um, an eye pillow might be really nice here. And then the goal in restorative yoga, which we didn't do a whole restorative yoga class, but this is a restorative yoga pose. It's just to allow yourself to soften and relax. So maybe close down the eyes or soften the gaze. And once we set up in these shapes, we stay in them for a while and just like sleep. We allow the body to soften and restore. Letting yourself melt into the support. Making any adjustments you might need to feel held and supported. Make this long, deep breathing for helping to strengthen and soothe our nervous system. Stimulating our vagus nerve that runs all the way through the body. Reminding ourselves that we're safe. We're nourished. Take a moment to observe all the places where your body is making contact with the earth. See if you can actively lean into that support. Letting go of tension in the forehead. And the cheeks. Loosening the jaw. Softening the shoulders. Notice the rise and fall of your breath, filling your belly.
we are here on this earth in part to feel enjoyment and pleasure. If we are in the pleasure and not the addiction, we are practicing brahmacharya. Non-excess is not about non-enjoyment. It's actually about enjoyment and pleasure in its fullest experience. We must be fearless in facing our sadness, grief, and disappointment without needing to soothe them. Overindulgence snuffs out the life force. Practicing non-excess preserves and honors this life force within us so that we can live with clarity and sacredness. If we stop and pause for a moment, we know that it's the simple things that stir our soul and bless us with happiness. The wind in the trees, the colors of the sky, the touch of a loved one, the delight of a child. A shared moment with a friend can fill us to overflowing. This overflowing is expansive and humbling. Much different than the satiation of excess. When gratitude and wonder sit in the heart, there is no need for excess. Seeing everything as holy brings a continuity to life. It grounds us in centeredness. Whereas excess overdoes us overextends us and takes away from ourselves. Seeing everything as sacred firmly roots us and balances us.
And the sense of wonder leaves us when everything becomes dull and ordinary. You might have kept too fast a pace for too long. Pushed past our own boundaries. And now we are out of balance. It is time for rest. When I'm rested, nothing is dull and ordinary. Everything glows with mystery. When I take it easy for a day or escape into the woods by myself, it is hard to give myself this rest. There are a million and one reasons why I can't. My ego likes to feel important. And it doesn't feel very important when I'm resting. My ego also doesn't like the idea that life can go on without me even if only for a few hours. I like to be where the action is. Besides, in this culture of constant activity, there's always so much that needs to be done. Resting rejuvenates my sense of mystery. In the simple act, I find my eyes are shifted to wonder and my heart spontaneously bursts with songs of gratitude. Brahmacharya reminds us we aren't embodied in this form to feel dead, but to feel alive. We aren't embodied to snuff out our vitality and passion through excess, but to bring it to full expression. Howard Thurman understood the importance of our passion to the world when he said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and then go and do it. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. Allow yourself a moment of quiet and rest. Now begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness into your heart center. 
And with each inhale, imagine your heart center is expanding in all directions, increasing your capacity to give and to receive love from your heart. And then take a nice deep breath all the way to your fingers and toes. Start to invite some gentle movement back in. You can unwind from your position that you're in by gently rolling onto one side. Coming into a fetal position, moving any props that you have out of the way. Take a moment to pause in that fetal position. Reminding yourself that you are embodied to feel alive. And when you feel ready, you can use the strength of your arms to press yourself up into a seat, inviting your hands to meet at your heart center. In a gesture of gratitude, Anjali Mudra. We'll take three nice deep breaths here. And then you're welcome to join me in singing a little song, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which means peace, peace, peace. So we'll inhale for Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. You can allow your head to gently bow towards the wisdom of your loving heart. It's such an honor and a privilege to guide you through your practice this morning. So I want to thank you all so much for being here with me. And then please feel free to stay after if you have any thoughts or questions about class.